All right, in this video, we're going to look at four examples that involve probability and counting rules. These four examples, we will be dealing with combinations, and I'm going to you know, stress that to you. Why is this going to be a combination versus a permutation before we actually dive into these four examples here? But let's look at what we have. A small shipping box with 24 small LED bulbs contains four defective bulbs. If four bulbs are sold at random, find the following probabilities. So what we want to do here is first of all, think about, do we have a permutation? Do we have a combination? Which is it? Well, you know, up here, I have the numbers one through 24 listed. Let's just let these represent the bulb. So we got 24 bulbs. I'm calling it bulb one, bulb two, bulb three, et cetera. And then uh, out of these 24, I have, you know, four red ones. These are going to be our defectives. I like we know which ones are which, but um, obviously when you sell them, you don't know that unless you test them. So bulb seven, bulb 14, bulb 17, and bulb 23 are your defectives. Now, if you're going to sell, notice the example says, uh, we have four defective bulbs out of 24, and we're going to sell four of them at random. Now, the reason why this is a combination, suppose you sold to a customer. Um, this could be like at Radio Shack or some electronic store where they have LEDs. Suppose you sold a customer bulb one, bulb eight, bulb uh, 14. Whoops. So bulb one, bulb eight, bulb 14. Well, like we don't know it, but I'm just pointing it out. And then bulb 19. Okay, that's one possible way to sell four bulbs to a customer, right? Well, here's the point. A combination is when order does not matter. So is this going to be the same sale to a customer? Uh, answer this question right here. If we sell them bulb eight, bulb 14, bulb one, and bulb 19, isn't that the exact same four bulbs, right? <laughs> it's just like the order in which you pull them off a, sh a shelf, it does not matter. If you sell a customer these four bulbs, it's the exact same thing as selling them these four bulbs. So the order does not matter, and that's why this is a combination. Um, permutations, order does matter, but here, selling a customer this is the exact same thing as selling a customer this. And once you get that concept down, then you can start applying your combination rules. But again, permutations, we'll address that in a future video. But right now we're dealing with combinations. So um, let's just write down a few facts. Uh, we got four defective and we have 20, uh, let's call them working, 20 of them work because we have 24 bulbs in all, right? Now let's address some other things too. Well, how many ways, you know, that this right here, this is not two ways. This is one way of selling four bulbs to a customer because again, order does not matter. Well, how many ways can we do this? How many ways can we sell four bulbs to a customer? Well, that's going to be used in pretty much all these problems. So um, out of 24 bulbs, uh, how many ways can we sell four of them? And since we said it's a combination, this right here is going to be the total number of ways that you can sell four bulbs to a customer out of the 24 bulbs. So let's go ahead and figure that out. Uh, 24 on a TI-84, we go 24, press math, go over to prob, and we want to do a combination. So three. So 24, we want to choose four because we're selling four bulbs. So we have a total of 10,626 ways, 10,626 ways that you can sell four bulbs um, out of 24 bulbs to a customer. And again, this right here, that's just one way because again, order does uh, not matter in a combination. We're still selling the same four bulbs. I hope that makes sense there. So um, how can we sell exactly two bulbs? Well, let's think about that. Question A, um, we're trying to sell exactly two. Well, let's think about this. How many ways can you do that if we look at the defective? Out of four defective bulbs, we want to choose two of them because we want exactly two. Notice I'm picking the four here. So four choose two. The reason why I'm doing that is because out of the four defective, I want to choose any two of them. All right. Now, again, that would be no different if I said, okay, uh, if I picked bulb 14 and 17, if those were sold in a set of four, um, selling 14 and 17 would be the same thing as selling 17 and 14 because it's still the same two bulbs. Order does not matter. Well, those are our two bulbs. Well, how many are we selling in all? We're selling four bulbs in all. So there's still two bulbs left that we're going to sell. Um, so well, what, what, what do we do here? Well, we're selling four bulbs 
two of them are going to be defective, that's going to leave the remaining two uh, that are going to be working fine. Well, how many ways, um, how many are we choosing from here? It's going to be 20 working. Now think about this. Out of four of the defective, we're choosing two because we want exactly two or two are defective. The other 20 bulbs, we want to choose two of those as well because now if we have two defective and two working, we do have four bulbs getting sold. So this is the number of ways that we can sell two defective and two working. And again, this is going to be out of this number right here. And I'm just going to go ahead and write 10,626. Because remember, when you're finding probabilities, you're saying, okay, the number of ways we can do this and the number of ways we can do this. We want to multiply those together. So let's go ahead and do that in our TI-84 right now. So four, choose two, and then we're going to multiply. Make sure you uh, get out of your little subscript thing down there. And 20 choose two. And then we want to divide this by the 10,000. 626 because again that's the total number of ways that we can sell uh, four bulbs out of 24 bulbs so we're looking at uh, that probability and if we convert this to a fraction uh, we get something like that so this is our answer to question a and again this can't it's going to take some practice it's going you have to make sure you understand what a combination is and then you also got to understand your basic probability rules when we're doing you know we got uh, two ways of doing this or four choose two ways of doing this and and multiply 20 choose two ways of doing this right here. We multiply those together, divide by the total number of ways. So that's question A. Let's look at question B now. Question B, well, find the probability that none of them are defective. So question B, we're looking at no bulbs are defective. Well, how in the world can we do that? If, we're, if no bulbs are defective, that means we're selling uh, four bulbs that are working. Or how many bulbs are working in all? 20, right? We, we addressed that back here too, and we mentioned it up here. So out of 20 working bulbs, we want to choose four because we want all four of these bulbs that we sell, we want all four of them to be working because we want to sell none of them. None of them are defective. So out of 20 working bulbs, we're going to choose four working, and we're going to divide this by the 10, 6, 2, 6. So let's go ahead and do that. So 20 choose four. And we want to divide this by the 10, 6, 2, 6. And I'm going to go ahead and get that fraction as well. So that's our probability there. Um, looking here, it looks like right now we have a much better chance of selling uh, four working bulbs versus selling exactly two defective bulbs. Look at our probabilities. There's only an 11% chance here, and there's a 46% chance here for looking at you know percentages or whatever. Now, What's the probability of all of them being defective? Well, think about this. How many bulbs are you selling? You're selling four bulbs, right? You're picking or you're choosing from 24, and out of those 24, four of them are jacked up. So really what you're going to do here, you, if you're going to sell all of them, if all of them are going, be, are going to be de defective, you're picking those four bulbs out of the 24. And imagine that's going to be pretty hard for you to you know, stick your hand in this box of 24 bulbs and, and you pick out all four defective to sell. There's only one way you can do that, right? Because out of the four defective bulbs in your shipping box, four of them are jacked up and you're selling all four of them. So that's going to be very unlikely. But to address that in question C, how many ways can we do this? So all of them are defective. Well, out of four defective bulbs, we're going to choose all four of them. And just to go ahead and stress that to you, four choose four is going to be one. There's only one way you can do that since order does not matter. Notice we get one. So we're going to put this over uh, 10,626. So therefore, we have one over 10,626. And I'm just going to go ahead and divide that. And I mean, that, so very unlikely, virtually impossible. I mean, we're talking, uh, you know, move that decimal over E negative five means move this decimal over five places to the left. So we're, we're talking a, a, a fraction of a percent, not even a 1% chance, nowhere near a 1% chance. Because think about that. Imagine that box f uh, filled up with 24 bulbs, four of those are jacked up and you got to pick up, you got to pick, you got to choose all four of those. It's not going to happen. <laughs> Very unlikely that you'll do that. 
So again, there's our decimal for that one. And then this last one here. Now there's going to be a shortcut for this and I'm gonna share that shortcut with you right here in a second. But if you want at least one defective, at least one defective means one can be defective or two can be defective or three can be defective or four can be defective out of a total number of 10,626 ways of choosing four bulbs from a pile of 24. So we have to address each one of these individually. And I mean, so at least one means it can be one or two or three or four. Now addressing these individually. So if one is defective, how many ways can we do that? Well, let's think about this. So I'm addressing just the one bulb right now. So out of four defective bulbs, we want to choose one of those bulbs. How many are we selling? We're selling four bulbs in all. Well, out of the other 20 working bulbs, we want to choose three of those. That is the number of ways that you can sell one defective bulb. Out of four defective, you're choosing just one. Out of the other 20 working bulbs, you're choosing three. Because notice this number here and this number here represents the total number of bulbs you're selling in all. All right, or plus, now let's do two. So out of four defective bulbs, you're going to now choose two because we're looking at the scenario of two defective. And then what are we gonna multiply that by? Uh, well, the remaining 20 that we have, we want to choose two of those as well because we're selling four bulbs. Two plus two is four. So we're selling two defective, two of the working ones. Or is plus so now coming to here, out of four defective bulbs, okay, we're looking at selling three now. We're going to choose three. And then out of your 20 working bulbs, you're going to choose one. Because now again, we're selling three defective, which means we're gonna sell one working bulb because we're selling four bulbs in all. Let me move that back. I'm just trying to, trying to slide this over a little bit and get some room. And then our last scenario, we've actually already addressed that. And to be quite honest with you, we've already addressed this two deal as well. That was the one we did up here. Um, notice that, 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 that's the same deal right there. And then this last piece down here. So four, we've already addressed that. That was this one over here. But just to kind of look at it and, and as, you know, maybe explain some other ideas of combinations to you. So out of, we wanna sell four defective. So out of four defective, we're gonna choose all four because we're looking at the scenario of selling four defective bulbs. Well then, out of the other 20 working bulbs, we don't wanna choose any of those because we're selling four bulbs and we want um, all four of them to be defective in this scenario. So again, at least one means one or two or three or four could be defective. Now that's a lot to type in. So what I've uh, went ahead and done here is I'm just gonna take this and we're gonna put that over on another page because I've already, uh, Got this worked out earlier. So out of 10,626 possible ways to sell four bulbs for out of 24 bulbs, um, that's that 10,626 ways. But out of doing that, if you look at what I've wrote here, so four choose one, 20 choose three, I'm matching these up, four choose two, 20 choose two, four choose three, 20 choose one, and then four choose four. Now you might say, oh, I left this off. Well, that's no big deal because uh, 20 choose zero, what is that going to be? 20 choose none, what's that gonna be? That's gonna be one. So, I mean, really this, times one is still gonna be just that. So that's what I have right there. So that's gonna be our numerator. All that stuff right there is gonna be our numerator. That's 5,781 ways out of 10,626 ways. Well, let's see what we get there. 5781 divided by 10,626. I don't think this is gonna simplify. Uh, okay, yes, it did. 1927 um, over 3542. So yes, it does simplify. That's the same probability as this. So we have a 54% chance of doing this. <laughs> I mean, that, that makes sense because you have a whole bunch of different scenarios. You could, at least one means um, you could sell one defective bulb to a customer out of the four you sold them, or you could sell two defective bulbs out of the four you sold them, or three or four. So you have, you know, various probabilities getting added together with that or statement. Now, what's another way we could approach this? 
If you want at least one, and here's the shortcut. Here's the shortcut for this problem. If you're going to sell at least one, that's going to be the complement of you selling no defective. Think about that. If you're going to sell at least one, that means you can sell one or two or three or four. And we're selling four bulbs. Well, the only other thing that it can't be is going to be you selling all four bulbs to a customer that work. So let's think about that. Here's a shortcut. Let's look at this scenario. Let's say, okay, out of our 20 working bulbs, suppose we uh, chose all four of the bulbs that we sold out of those 20 working ones. Suppose we chose all four working ones to sell to a customer. Let's find this probability. So 20, choose four. So 4,000. Uh, 845. So 4,845 over 10, 6, 2, 6. Now this, ain't, now watch, we're going, we had to talk a little bit more about this. So divide by 10, 6, 2, 6, and we get this probability here. Now, this is the only scenario that does not meet this. At least one, again, means you can sell one or two or three or four defective. The only thing that's not being talked about here is you selling all four bulbs that are working. This is the probability of you selling all four bulbs that are working. And this is the only other scenario that could happen. So what we want to do is do the complement of this. Um, if we take one and subtract that answer that we just got. So really what we're doing here is we're taking uh, one minus that thing to find the same answer here. Uh, or that answer there simplified. So let's take one and let's subtract that probability of four, eight, four, five over 10, 6, 2, 6. Now this is a much faster way, but it's often overlooked because you're, you're not realizing that there's only one scenario where this can't happen. So divide or subtract that answer. Boom. And if I convert this, or maybe you remember right there, look. So we're taking one and we're subtracting the probability of us selling all four bulbs working. All right. So again, that's a way you can do it. And typically that you will see that in a, in a statistics course. Uh, you want to take that shortcut versus you doing all of this, because imagine if we had, you know, uh, a bigger box of bulbs and we were selling more of them, you know, th th this would get real tedious um, to do all this. So at least one is a common uh, time to say, hey, let me consider the complement. At least one, the opposite of at least one is doing none, selling no defective. And that's exactly what I addressed right here because out of 20 working bulbs, we could choose all four that we sell to be um, from the working part, and that's going to be out of that total number. So there you have it. That's four examples that involve probability and counting rules, and in this case, they were all combination examples. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped.